Uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, in this video we are going to talk about uh, the uh, antimicrobial enzymes or some other proteins uh, that are present in the saliva. In the last video I've told you that if you talk about the uh, different kind of the enzyme that are present in the saliva, one of the important one was the alpha amylase which was actually produced by the serous cells of the parotid and the submandibular glands and the uh, function of the alpha amylase was to uh, hydrolyze the dietary starches into di and trisaccharides which are then converted by another enzyme known as the amyloglucosidase into glucose and then this glucose that can be utilized by the body for the uh, production of the energy. Uh, another important uh, enzyme that we discussed was the lingual lipase which was actually responsible for the breakdown of the lipids and that were actually produced by the uh, glands that are present on the tongue and the sublingual glands. Uh, and the uh, the lingual the uh, lingual lipases that were actually utilizing uh, a catalytic triad made up of the uh, aspartic acid at position number 203 the histidine at 257 and the serine at 144 and this catalytic triad was actually initiating the hydrolysis of the lipids and it was converting the uh, trigalyceride into glu uh, into, into glycerol and then the free fatty acid and I've told you that these uh, lingual lipases they are really active against the short chain triacide glycerides like the one that are found in the milk fat. Now in this particular video I want to focus on the uh, antimicrobial enzymes that are present in the that are present in the saliva and the three important enzymes that are present in the saliva that are the uh, the first one is the lysozyme the second one is the salivary lactoper oxidase and the third one is the lactoferrin so in this particular video i'll be focusing on the first two that is the lysozyme and the salivary lactoper oxidase so let us discuss about the uh, lysozymes first now the uh, enzyme lysozyme it is also known as the uh, muramidase and it is also known as the N-acetyl muramide glycan hydrolase. So these three things, the lysozyme, the muramidase and the N-acetyl muramide glycan hydrolase that refers to one and the same thing. If you talk about the uh, enzyme, the lysozyme enzyme, it is actually an important component of the uh, innate immune system of the humans. And this innate immune system, uh, it's actually a, a non-specific immune system that is found in our body and lysozyme is an important member of this uh, innate immune system. Now what this uh, lysozyme do is that it's actually go for the uh, hydrolysis of the peptidoglycan layer uh, present in the uh, cell wall of present in the cell wall of the bacteria. Before moving into the uh, function of this enzyme, you need to understand the uh, basic structure of the cell wall of the uh, or the peptidoglycan layer of the uh, cell wall of bacteria. If you talk about the structure, the structure is actually made of a sugar backbone, and the sugar that are found in the peptidoglycan layer are one is known as the NAG, and the other one that is known as the NAM. So if you talk about the NAG, this is actually N-acetyl glucose amine. If you talk about the NAM, it is actually the N-acetyl muramic acid. So the sugar backbone of peptidoglycan layer that is made by N-acetyl uh, glucose amine and N-acetyl muramic acid, uh, they are known as NAG and name for short. So the NAG and the name, they are actually making the sugar backbone. So this NAG and the name, they are connected to each other uh, by what is called as the 1,4 beta linkages. And these 1,4 beta linkages are actually providing uh, a structure, uh, you can say a, a structural uh, stability to the uh, peptidoglycan layer. Now the uh, NAM, they are also attached to uh, what is called is a, a tetrapeptide chain. Say for example, if this is one NAM, uh, this one is one NAM, so uh, a tetrapeptide chain is attached to this. Similarly, if this is another NAM present in the other layer of the sugar backbone, that is also having a tetrapeptide chain. And these tetrapeptide chains, they are actually connected to each other by what is known as a peptide interbridges. So if this is NAM, it is having a tetrapeptide chain. 
this is another name they are having the uh, tetrapeptide bridges so these two tetrapeptide bridges they are actually interconnected to each other by peptide interbridges so this whole phenomenon the presence of the 1,4 beta linkages the tetrapeptide chain and the peptide interbridges give the uh, peptidoglycan there its structural stability now what the um, uh, lysozyme do this lysozyme it belongs to the family of glycoside hydrolase this lysozyme is going to hydrolyze the uh, beta 1 4 linkages these uh, beta 1 4 linkages that are present between the nag and the nam and when you uh, hydrolyze the beta 1 4 linkages it is actually going to compromise the integrity of the cell walls of the bacteria and if the integrity of the cell wall of the bacteria that are compromised it actually leads to the uh, lysis of the bacteria now when you talk about the food there can be gram positive organism they can be contaminated with the gram negative organism so the lysozyme they are uh, very active against the gram positive bacteria as compared to the gram negative bacteria and the reason is that the uh, peptidoglycan layer of the gram positive bacteria that is thick one and that is you can say in the exposed form if you compare the peptidoglycan layer of the uh, gram positive bacteria with that of the gram negative bacteria so the peptidoglycan layer of the gram negative bacteria is actually covered by another layer which is known as the lipopolysaccharide layer so that layer is present uh, outside the peptidoglycan layer and that is providing a sort of protection to the uh, peptidoglycan layer of the gram negative bacteria as this lipopolysaccharide layer that is absent in the uh, gram positive bacteria so the lysozyme they can actually have a much greater activity against the gram positive one as compared to the uh, gram negative one uh, another important enzyme uh, the antimicrobial enzyme present in the saliva that is known as the salivary lactoper oxidase now how this particular enzyme work let us discuss that in detail if you look at the name of this enzyme this is salivary lactoper oxidase what this means is that the lactoper oxidase is produced by the other body parts as well so to specify the one that is present in the saliva we call it is the salivary lactoper oxidase now if you talk about the uh, sources of the hydrogen peroxide uh, the sources of the hydrogen peroxide that usually comes from a reaction between the glucose and the oxygen in the presence of the enzyme which is known as the glucose oxidase and the reaction between the glucose and oxygen in the presence of this enzyme is going to produce the hydrogen peroxide in the saliva now this glucose uh, as I've told you uh, this comes from the starch the starch is uh, hydrolyzed by the alpha amylase into di and trisaccharides and then the amyloglucosidase convert those di and trisaccharide into the glucose and oxygen of course is present uh, there in the uh, oral cavity so when the glucose and the oxygen they react with each other they give you hydrogen peroxide now what this lactoper oxidase enzyme do is it go for the it catalyzes the uh, hydrogen peroxide oxidation of several acceptor molecules now if i give you some of the uh, examples of the uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, oxidation uh, the uh, important examples they are the uh, see for example you've got a reduced acceptor in the presence of the uh, hydrogen peroxide and the lactoper oxidase they will can they will be converted into the oxidized acceptors and the water and looking at the specific examples if the uh, thiocyanate if that come in interaction with the uh, hydrogen peroxide it is going to give you the hypothiocyanate if you talk about the bromide they, that would be converted into the hypobromide and the iodide into the hypoiodide now these short-lived oxidized intermediates they have potent bactericidal effects and these uh, uh, oxidized intermediates are going to act on the membranes of the bacteria and when they act on the membranes of the bacteria the permeability and hence the structural integrity of the uh, membranes uh, that is gone thereby these short-lived oxidized intermediates have potent bactericidal effect 
Now this enzyme, the lactoper oxidase, uh, it acts synergistically with the uh, uh, lysozyme that we just discussed and another enzyme which is known as the lactoferrin and we will discuss about the uh, lactoferrin in the uh, next video. So if you like the video, uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, like this video and do share it with your friends.